Our text for today comes from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 7, verses 55 to 60. Acts 7, verses 55 to 60. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your faithful servant Stephen showed us a true model of a life filled with the testimony to your son Jesus Christ. Help us to be strong in faith and to tell the whole world about the salvation offered freely to each believer. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of Jesus' commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, this text gives us some information about the first mar martyr, the one who suffered from the following, from following Jesus Christ as his Lord, the one who witnessed to his Lord Jesus, and he ended up being killed. Stephen was among the seven deacons who served with the apostle. What happened was uh, in the early Christian, they pulled their resources together and shared a commonwealth. And a high priority was to provide for widows and orphans. They distributed food on a daily basis. Therefore, they need more help. The problem was some received more, some received less. So they need to concentrate the way to manage all of those gifts. So they elected seven elders or deacons to work with them. And Stephen was one of them. Among the seven, there was no detailed description except for Stephen. And Luke called him a man full of faith and a man full of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 6 uh, verse 5. He preached, he told everyone about Jesus Christ and before he was stoned to death, he gave a long sermon starting from the Old Testament about all of the patriarchs, the way God led his people and he told about Jesus the one you crucified, and he is the son of God. He died and he rose again. And that's the reason why we are here. And he didn't do anything wrong to be killed. It is just about the witness to Jesus Christ. And that cost his life. He was not killed by the Romans were the, uh, the armies, but he was killed by his own people. He was killed by upstanding members of religious communities, some regular members of the synagogue, the elders, religious professionals, priests. They killed Stephen. And Stephen had this opportunity to tell them about Jesus Christ. Stephen showed to them the love from God and that was fulfilled through Jesus Christ. 
he was accused for nothing. The same way they accused Jesus Christ. The same way with the followers of the Lord would be accused of. And that is called persecution. And we can see here, look, just put a little phrase mentioning about the little, the young Saul. Who later on become Paul and became one of the disciples, the evangelist who preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. When Stephen was killed, when he was torn to death, he prayed the same prayer Jesus did on the cross in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. That's what he said. He still prayed. So it was not just Jesus who did that prayer. But we, when we have the power through the Holy Spirit, we can pray and ask for forgiveness for those who's accusing us for something that we didn't do. For those who persecute us because of our faith. And when he died, Luke described it as he fell asleep. That is the death of the believers. He died peacefully. He died with faith. And as it is written in Psalm 31 verse 5. And Jesus said the same thing on the cross. Also recorded by Luke chapter 23 verse 46. Jesus said, into your hands I commit my spirit. Psalm 31 verse 5. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. If you'll be dying in the next minute or in the next second, what is the final word that will come out of your mouth? My prayer is that each of us will have the opportunity to say, Into your hands I commit my spirit, O Lord. That is a word of trust. At that time, we see Jesus standing there right next to God, the Father, waiting for you to come over. His body didn't suffer anymore because his soul left. He fell asleep. That is the death of the believers. My friend, let us pray that when our time comes, we'll have the opportunity to ask God to receive our soul. And will say, into your hands I commit my spirit, O God. Let us pray that when the time comes for us to meet with our maker, we'll be ready like Stephen here and not afraid of what's happening to our body, but focus more on our relationship with Jesus Christ. Stephen prayed for his killers. Stephen didn't complain about the death that is coming. And those are something that we need to learn from this martyr. That death is not a fear for us because Jesus Christ conquered death himself. And that victory is given to every believer. That we will not be afraid to die. We are ready to meet with Jesus. Jesus standing there looking at Stephen. And Jesus said, you are such a faithful servant. Come in. I love you, Stephen. I appreciate what you did for me. Are you ready to be the witness of Jesus Christ? To preach and tell the whole world that he is the Lord? Not afraid to be persecuted? Not afraid to be beheaded. Not afraid to be stoned to death. Not afraid to lose everything that you have. Jesus can change you. And make you embrace him more and more as your Lord and your Savior. Amen.